Hello, my name's John Sparkman, and today I'm going to show you where you should be metering with your external handheld light meter. So I bought myself a handheld light meter, specifically the L308S. Uh, a few years ago, I got it for about £35, which is about a third of the normal kind of brand new price. And it sat in my bag for quite a long time just because I didn't really know how to use it. When I wanted to start doing these YouTube videos, I am filming it with the Canon 6D, which doesn't actually have a flip out screen. So I couldn't judge the camera settings and how bright my exposure should be. So I had a little look online to find out how you should be using an external meter for your videos and where to more importantly put the light meter to get the best results. So first things first, to clear up any confusions, you should never have your light meter with the little sensor hanging out here. You should always have this little semisphere covering it. The reason why it does that is because this semisphere here takes in meter readings from every angle, from 180 degrees, so you've got some highlights, you've got some shadows, some top light and bottom light, and it averages them into middle gray. You do this because you are a 3D object, you're not a flat object. You would only flip this to the left, to the spot section if you needed to do a spot meter reading or something really far away or you wanted to put the flat disc on. I happen to have the flat disc, it's slightly broken but I think I got it for free so I'm not going to complain. And all you do is you just kind of rest it on there in place of where the semisphere is and it's going to take flat meter readings. This is more for contrast or if you're trying to do copy reading so if you're, if you're trying to light a picture or something flat. So the general rule is if it's flat, you use the flat disc, and if it's round, you use the, uh, the round attachment on top. So depending on where you are in the world, your frames per second for video might be different. Here in the UK, it's quite easy. It's 25 frames per second, but other places in the world can be 29.97, or they can be 24 frames a second. You may be wondering how to get these odd frames per second ratings through an external handheld meter. Maybe you've only seen on the side it can do 20, 25, 30, 60 uh, shutter speeds like a normal photo camera would instead of a video camera. I actually found out the answer to this by looking at the manual. It's one of the only manuals I've actually ever read, uh, and mainly because it's about three pages long. If you hold down the shutter speed button on the side and you go all the way up, you can go past hundredth of a second, kind of thousandth of a second, it'll keep on going, six thousandth of a second, so on six thousandth of a second shutter speed. Keep on going up, past eight thousandth, and you'll actually get into the F slash S, which is the frames per seconds. And you've got eight, 12, 16, 18, 24, 25, 30, 32, it goes all the way up until 128 frames per second. Uh, these are the film meter readings. These are ones you can use with things like cinema cameras. Maybe if you're using like an old Super 8 kind of camera, you might have to use these absurd 128 frames per second kind of ratings. As I'm in the UK, I'm going to keep my frames per second at 25 and I'm going to keep the camera at 50 on the shutter speed. Now the next problem is whereabouts to take the meter reading. When I first started, I was told to face the white sphere towards the light put it as close to your subject as possible and press a button on the side to get a meter reading. This gives me a uh, aperture of 4.5, which is actually quite low. I'm gonna put the camera on 4.5 now just to show you what would happen. Okay, so now we're on 4.5 on the aperture. All the other settings have stayed the same. I'm on ISO 200 and the shutter speed is 50 and the frames per second is 25. The reason why I'm so dark is because the light meter's job is to make everything middle gray, so halfway between black and halfway between white. When I tell the light meter that here I want to be middle gray, it's going to drop down the exposure so this is gray and not my highlights. So next up, I want to try and meter the normal way, which is the recommended under the chin method. All you do is you face the sphere towards the camera, under the chin, so it's just a little bit of shade, and press the button. So it's given me a light meter reading of 2.8 on the aperture. I'm just gonna dial that in a second. Okay, so this is 2.8. What happens by metering just beneath the chin is that you avoid something called top light. Top light is anything which is above the subject, such as the sky. At the moment, I have a daylight balance bulb directly above me, and I also have a rim light behind me which is casting some light just onto my face here. Also by lighting just beneath the chin, you get a nice contrast from the shadow and the highlight sides without any distracting top light. Now the third place that you can meter from is the shadow. 
For this you want to make sure that your sphere is facing the camera again and you want to put it in the shadows of your face usually. So about here should be fine, I'm just looking at my external monitor and you want to press the button. So this is giving me a re meter reading of 2.5. I can dial this in now. And now my shadows are completely uh, exposed for middle gray. Because this is middle gray, my shadows, my highlights are gonna be brighter. Because I do have quite fair kind of Caucasian skin, it is going to make me nice and um, light in my giant soft box to my side. My rim light behind me isn't going to actually affect the light meter because it's only taking meter readings forwards, I don't have to worry about this one back here. Sometimes if you are having something with a top light, like my light as I mentioned before, you can shield the top of the light meter when taking a reading. That will give me 3.2. I'm just going to dial that in now. There you go, and that's now compensated for the top light. So I hope I've been able to teach you something today about using a light meter. If you want to go out and try and use a light meter, I do suggest it for anything you do, photo and video. If you enjoyed what you saw here, please like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.